Welcome one and all to the Nintendo Switch's first ever November. It's a big month and there are a bunch of important dates and we're here to break down the top 10 Switch games of November 2017. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. I've got Gabe here and earlier we covered every Switch release in this fine 11th month but today we picked our 10 favorites for you to focus on and we are going to go through them in chronological order. A lot of good titles from top to bottom and that begins with Sonic Forces on November 7th. Now, the demo being so short may have soured some people, but all in all, the game looks to be pretty fun, and while it definitely will not reach the heights of Super Mario Odyssey, it could be a nice uh, secondary platforming fast-paced title for people to focus on in this Thanksgiving month, and it is bringing Sonic to the Switch day and date with other platforms, which as a, a person that really appreciates third-party uh, support on the Switch, I gotta give props to all right, so uh, first of all, I do want to say not a full price release. It does retail for $49.99, so it is a little bit easier on your wallets, and you need that because this month has so many good games coming. Uh, you also touched on the third-party support. That's going to be a recurring theme uh, throughout this yes. list. There's so much third-party. Uh, November seems to be the month where Nintendo is focusing on that just because it doesn't seem like they have anything big of their own, so uh, that that's cool as well. Uh, that demo was very bad, though. <laughs> um, and today we got yeah. ne- today we got news that there will be no pre-release review uh, for Sonic Forces uh, so they're going to give people re- uh, review code the day of so make of that what you will that doesn't always yeah. necessarily mean it's bad but more often than not it, it kind of does uh, you know it- Bethesda likes doing that and you know their games are you know their games people like their games a whole lot so it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be horrible but you know it's not Doom but it's definitely discouraging yeah for sure Speaking of Doom. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Doom releases on the 10th of November. And uh, I talked about this in in the other video. Like, this is my favorite shooter of the last five years. Uh, Originally came out in 2016 on pretty much every other platform. I played it on PC. And more than anything, I'm just curious to see how that's going to translate. A big, beautiful, like, game like this on the Nintendo Switch. How is the port going to work? You know, it, it... to me, that's the most interesting part of this game because if I want to play Doom, I could go play Doom, you know, close to 4K and have a better experience. But it's such an important release because this is going to dictate going forward, I think, how third party is handled on Switch. Yeah, and I've played it myself and it performed and played pretty well. I felt like it was adequate enough for the Switch to support a good experience. Is it anywhere near as good uh, as the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One version or, or what you'll get out of a PC uh, Doom experience? No, but it definitely ran well enough to be completely playable, completely enjoyable, and I think for those of you who have not had a chance to play Doom or those of you that want some fast-paced first-person shooter action on the go, it's going to be a great addition. And like you mentioned, Gabe, another good third-party title uh, that could maybe not dictate entirely, but at least will help... Uh, developers know uh, what they can do with the system and how Bethesda, uh, you know, then positions Wolfenstein 2 next year and what they maybe decide to do with with future releases. So this definitely is an important one. Um, But the third title on our list is maybe the most important on the list to us personally here at Switch Force, and that is Snipperclips Plus, also on November the 10th. This is a retail release as well as a digital expansion for the original launch day Snipperclips Cooperative K crazy game, a phenomenal game, and this expansion adds two new worlds, three new activities, a new stamp mode, and the ability to replay old levels as new shapes. So a pretty hefty package, and any opportunity to dive back into the world of Snip and Clip is one that I will just chomp at the bit for. People wanted a physical release of this, and they are getting it with this. Um, again, alternatively, you can purchase the content separately. Uh, retails for twenty nine ninety nine. I'm assuming you can just get the uh, separate content for ten dollars if you already own the game and call it a day. But you know, for people that really, really like collecting these cases and the cartridges, uh, you know, they're throwing you a bone with this one. The game is phenomenal. We we've sung its praises, uh, you know, plenty around here. There, there's not too much else to say. I'm really excited to play this stuff with you guys. And uh, yeah, Snipper Clips is awesome. Absolutely. And now a lot of these dates, a lot of these dates double up and sometimes quadruple up. And and November 14th seems to be the big kahunas. Numbers four through seven are all releasing on this fine Tuesday. It's a very, very busy day uh, here. Um, (laughs) Batman Telltale Season 1. Batman 
Telltale, not my favorite of the Telltale series. I played the first two episodes, and honestly, like to me, and this is you know a, a lot of people still love them, but to me, the Telltale series they get a little bit redundant uh, as they go on. They haven't changed the engine; they're all a little bit too similar for my liking. But it's a really good Batman story, especially uh, the reviews for the later episodes are all pretty positive. Season two is in full swing, and if you're a fan of either Batman or Telltale, if you want season two on Switch at some point, you probably want to get this one. Yes, and Telltale Games uh, are pro- uh, one of the more ideal fits for Switch. We've already had the Minecraft Telltale title, um, but if that does not appeal to you, then this may be more up your alley. I have played Season 1. I thought it was pretty fun. It does offer a little bit of a twist on the typical Batman story, which I appreciated. Um, and Season 2 seemed to be received quite well. So even though this is a late addition to the Switch Arsenal, it's another third-party edition, which gives it a little bit more oomph. Um, and I'm excited to see how it does and if they're able to start bringing the series day and date uh, to the Switch, which would be nice. Another uh, physical release, again, for people that love the cartridges, $39.99, uh, the price is a little high, but um, I-, I wanted to make sure that people are aware both that it is physical, so if they want to get that, and the price is a-, is a little high, in my opinion, but it-, it is what it is. Sometimes we do get that switch tax, uh, but Zach, take us to the next one. Absolutely, and next up, still on November 14th, is one of my favorite games of last generation, L.A. Noir, and this is monumental because not only is it one of my favorite games, but it's Rockstar bringing a big title to the Switch. Now, it's also seen a remastered re-release on the other platforms, and it's coming day and date to the Switch. Now, I dread even mentioning the fact that it's more expensive on the Switch, but it is. $10 more, which is a bit of a bummer, but you are getting the full Eleanor experience with the DLC, um, and there are some Switch exclusive features, so that could be kind of cool, touchscreen and the likes, uh, but in general, this is a really... I feel one of the most important releases of the month because it is a major developer uh, putting their hand into the Switch pot. And we've seen 2K take risks already. Uh, Take two in the form of their sports titles, now bringing a Rockstar title. Could this open the door even further in 2018? I feel like November is really the month where a lot of publishers are really kind of putting it out there for Switch and seeing what sells. And, And maybe it is just a blind grab at trying to get uh, some some gains in the big Thanksgiving Black Friday month, but I, I like to think that this is also an attempt to open the floodgates in the coming months and coming years. Absolutely. I worry that at some point the floodgates are a little too open, but uh, L.A. Noir is the game that I played just a little bit of, and you, and you love it. So it's going to give me a chance to absolutely go back and enjoy what I hope is a really cool story. Uh, I'm really into like detective mystery stories, and uh, hopefully... This is a good one. I just wish it wasn't like on such a busy day. There's a lot to play that day. Right. And it, it goes off the rails a little bit towards the end. But the first, I don't know, 75, 80% of that game is exceptional. And I love just rising through the ranks and, and doing different murder cases and doing different arson cases and doing different petty crime cases. It's just a very cool concept. And it's executed, I feel, incredibly well. And you said that that was an important game, and the next one here, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. I feel like that's important as well, because they made sure that it was going to have console parity with every other platform, so it is the full experience, and day and date, another thing that that we really like here, and uh, physical release as well, full retail, uh, so uh, you're not going to get any discounts on this one, but Lego Marvel Super Heroes, the original, does hold a special place in my heart. I love that game, it it, it did so much for me, uh, like personally, that I won't get into here, but it I'm really looking forward to the series. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy have been added. It looks fun. Uh, We played a little bit of it at E3, I believe. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's still Lego Marvel Super Heroes. If you love the original, you're going to love this one. Um, And, again, just recurring theme here. Third-party support strong in the month of November. Absolutely. And then indie support also making some gains in November. The final game on the 14th for the Switch that we are highlighting is our seventh title, and that's Rocket League. This one has been coveted for quite a while, and it's getting an earlier release than I think people expected. It was looking to shift towards the end of the year, maybe the month of December, but it's coming November 14th, a busy day, but it's $20. It brings the Mario, Luigi, and Samus cars, and hopefully a whole lot of multiplayer fun for Switch owners. There's not a lot to say about this. You probably have seen, played heard, read something about Rocket League, uh, so you know this is going to be one of the must-buys of the month. Yes, one of the best games of the generation, and I know that sounds weird, but that game is like absolute awesomeness, and uh, $20, um, the the physical one might be like a little bit delayed, so uh, uh, you're going to get the digital one first probably, um, 
And like you said, like, there's not too much to say about this one other than it's like really, really good. And, you know, I'm sorry we, I didn't include it in the other video. This got announced super last minute. It was so shocking that the game was coming this soon. Absolutely. So that will be, it's one of my personal favorites on this entire list. Yeah, I do, I do plan on destroying you if we're together for Christmas, Zach. Uh, next up, though, <laughs> Skyrim. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, to be exact, on the 17th of November. Um, like with Rocket League, it, it's difficult to say too much about this one. Other than, yay, third-party support, uh, we have the Zelda-exclusive content in Skyrim, which you've advocated Nintendo should do for, for third parties. They should have something small in there that uh, would entice people to purchase it uh, on their uh, console. You've had many an opportunity to buy Skyrim at many a different price range, but you get to have it on Switch as the first time you can play it portably. So that's definitely new. And, uh, you know, people seem to be excited for it, which is strange to me. But I also stop and think like, hey, people that play Nintendo consoles probably haven't played Skyrim on PC or on PS4 or, or PS3 or Xbox, any of the many platforms it's been on. So for a lot of people, it seems like it's going to be the first time they get to play the game. Absolutely. So it is, again, another nice addition. It's not a new game. In fact, it's a pretty old game, uh, but it's a big, bold open world title, and combining this with the likes of L.A. Noir um, provides, and Doom, provides a lot of different genres and a lot of cool content for Switch owners. And that moves us to uh, one of the more under-the-radar titles of November, which is Tiny Metal on November 21st. This is an indie game in the vein of Advance Wars, and since we're not getting Wargroove this year, I feel like Tiny Metal really steps up to the plate and delivers what looks to be a very cool uh, strategic warfare game that I am incredibly excited for. No word yet on how it plays. I haven't read or heard anything, um, but I'm pretty pumped to check out and see if it can even live up to half the hype uh, that Advance Wars delivered on the old Nintendo Portables. This game was a little bit weird because at first I was put off by the art, by the art style. Like, it, it looked mm. weird to me. Like, it looked, like, almost, like, amateurish. And it is, like, a small team. But now I've kind of grown to love the the art style. Just, like, seeing the trailers and stuff. It looks really, really cool. They're saying they're hoping for a 7 to 10 hour campaign, which I feel is, like, perfect for, like, an indie game like this. And, uh, yes, if you really want Wargroove and the fact that it's not coming this year hurts you, Tiny Metal will probably fill that void for you. Absolutely. Carry us to the final game on the list, Gabe. Resident Evil Revelations Collections. That's a weird sentence. Uh, comes on the 28th of November. So you do get part one and part two bundled together. You can alternatively buy them separately digital. Uh, but if you want it physical, you have to buy the collection. It's $40, $20 individual for the games. And uh, they these are really good Resident Evil games. Um, at the time of their release, um, people kind of like love the fact that it went to a little bit more traditional uh resident evil style story uh the original revelations even came to 3ds so you know the switch can more than handle them that's not going to be a problem at all um i did play these i did like them a whole lot and uh, it focuses on characters that don't necessarily like get the spotlight in resident evil too often and uh these are good ones yes we can't have resident evil 7 on switch that doesn't seem like it's happening capcom said that they are not in the business of supporting uh consoles that have only been around for the year they said that today which is a little bit strange but you know they're giving us this and uh they're good games yeah they're, they're definitely not bad they're not my favorites but i think that they're solid uh super late release but again it's a, another formidable publisher putting support on switch and something that like we mentioned at the top will probably dictate some of the future so a very big month a very important month uh, and a very full month we obviously just got the biggest Switch game in the form of Super Mario Odyssey, but the fun does not stop in November as we carry towards the holidays. We've got a whole lot of Switch stuff. Let us know in the comments below which of these 10 games you're most excited for and why. And if you think there's a title that we left off our top 10, let us know that as well. In the meantime, everybody, enjoy your gaming. We're going into another grand month for Switch. Seems like every month is grand, and that is a good sign. So enjoy, have fun. Thanks for watching. Until next time, everybody, for myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.